In the last video module, we introduced the standard error, constructed error bars, and interpreted error bars as not plausibly, plausibly, or instead very plausibly originating from the same distribution, depending on whether they were far apart, barely touching, or instead overlapping. In this video, we will discuss illusory sample size and statistical significance. It is important to review this discussion because the inappropriate application of the square root n formula for the standard error can lead to the plotting of error bars and conclusions about statistical significance that are faulty. Consider a two-channel fluorescence image in which cellular nuclei are visible in the blue channel and single-cell copy numbers of a molecular species of interest can be assessed by counting dots in the pink channel. These four blue circles represent the single-cell copy numbers of pink dots in four different individual cells in this fluorescence image. A cohort of interest may include another patient, blue 2. Single-cell copy numbers of pink dots are also counted for this patient. Suppose that additional cells are counted for each patient, that copy numbers are counted for 25 cells total per patient. Let's say that the blue cohort contains five total patients. In this example, the single-cell copy numbers tend to cluster within each patient. The variation in single-cell copy numbers among the patients is much greater than the variation in single-cell copy numbers among cells from the same patient. Our cohort provides 5 patients multiplied by 25 cells per patient or 125 single-cell copy number measurements. However, this clearly does not imply having 125 statistically independent measurements. Knowledge of the single cell copy number in one cell very precisely specifies the single cell copy numbers of all other cells imaged from the same patient. In actuality, we have only five statistically independent measurements, at most. Using, for example, only the first sample from each patient, we can generate a sample mean and, by inserting a sample size of n equals 5 into the square root in the denominator of the standard error formula, draw error bars of appropriate size. Consider a second cohort. The squares represent the single cell copy numbers of fluorescent dots in individual cells in this pink cohort. Taking, for example, the first single-cell measurement from each pink patient, we can calculate a sample mean, and again using a sample size of n equals 5 in the formula for the standard error, draw error bars appropriately. Again, we are recognizing that single-cell measurements cluster within each patient, so we have not 125 statistically independent measurements from the five patients, but instead only five statistically independent data points at most. We were able to determine appropriate sample sizes for these cohorts because we plotted single-cell measurements and saw that they clustered within each patient. Had we not inspected the data set in detail, we might not have noticed this feature, and we might have negligently assumed that we had as many statistically independent data points as we had total single-cell measurements, meaning 125 measurements for each cohort. Using all 125 of the single-cell measurements from the blue cohort would produce a sample mean in about the same position as already illustrated. But using the incorrect sample size n equals 125 in the formula for the standard error would produce an excessively large denominator and thus inappropriately narrow error bars. In the same way, a failure to plot or otherwise investigate in detail the single-cell measurements from the pink cohort could lead to an incorrect use of a sample size of n equals 125 that would lead us to draw inappropriately narrow error bars around the pink sample mean. The accurately drawn error bars are barely touching. Using these error bars, we would find it plausible that the blue and pink sample means were drawn from the same distribution, and in this sense the blue and pink cohorts agree. In contrast, the inaccurately drawn error bars marked with X's are far apart, nowhere near overlapping. As described in the previous video, we ascribe to such a situation a probability value less than 5%, and so the disagreement between the sample means would be regarded as statistically significant. This conclusion would be incorrect. The sample size n in the expression for a statistic often refers to the number of statistically independent samples rather than simply the total number of samples per se. 
This is because many of the formulas used routinely in laboratory error analysis are derived using the identity that states that the variance of the sum equals the sum of the variances, and this identity comes from the assumption of statistical independence. In this slide deck on sample estimates, we introduced the standard error, we compared error bars, and we cautioned against the use of incorrect sample sizes, n, in the formula for the standard error, because such sample sizes could lead to erroneous conclusions regarding statistical significance.